Delaney is asking, what is white privilege? I'm trying to understand it well. Okay, now I'm about to explain, Delaney, from my perspective, what white privilege is. Now, here's the deal. You don't have to agree that what I'm saying is right. And if you disagree with me, it doesn't make you a racist. What I will say, though, is your willingness to understand something that you're not familiar with is amazing, and you should continue that mindset. If you do, wallahi, you'll be successful for the rest of your life, okay? So I just want to set that table, okay, sis? You, you don't have to agree with me, and disagreeing with me does not make you a racist, okay? So I'm going to explain to you the concept of white privilege from my vantage point, and then um, we'll, we'll see, okay? So white privilege is the idea that, well, there's a couple things. One, one is there's a mathematical issue, right? White people are the majority in this country. So just on a general basis, we know human nature, whatever system you come from, that we have a bent towards selfishness, right? Like I've got a two-year-old and I've got, to, I've got to teach him to share with his baby brother. I don't have to teach him to stop giving away all of his food, right? So we're bent towards selfishness. So if you have uh, a society that is the majority of anything, that majority is going to have uh, a privilege over other people, right? Now, here's the second thing. Let's go with the with the with the race analogy. Let's say that we're all lining up for the hundred yard dash, right? So there's a hundred yards you have to go, and whoever reaches the finish line first wins. But let's say that my son, I start him at the 40, I give him a 40 yard head start above everybody else. Now let's say he wins that race. Does it mean that he didn't practice? Nope. No, it doesn't mean he didn't practice. Does it mean that he didn't sweat on the field for, for countless hours leading up to the meet? Nope. No. Does it mean that he didn't run his ass off in the, in the, in the race? No. No. It just meant he had a head start, therefore he had an advantage that other people did not have right okay so what happens with a lot of our white friends is when you tell them you have white privilege and that's why you won the race what they're hearing is you never worked out you never did a push-up you never ran you didn't run as hard as you could at the race you never did any of that stuff it was just given to you and your white friends are like well that's not true i worked my ass off mm -hmm. yep Everybody worked their ass off, bro. The problem is, is that you're in a society that is structured to give you a 40-yard head start. What do I mean by that? Well, one, obviously, is uh, slavery, right? And, and people go, well, slavery happened in the past. I agree. So did the Declaration of Independence in July 4, 1776. But we just got done celebrating something in the past, right? Because we understand that what our fathers and our mothers did in the past has ramifications for today. Absolutely. So you have a group of people who were brought over here as slaves. They didn't come over here because it was a land of opportunity. They came here because they were slaves. Okay, fine. And they were enslaved for about 250, 300 years. Then they got released. When they got released... Um, we had the 13th Amendment, which literally states Ugh. that we cannot have slaves except for our prison system. It literally says that. Go check it out. Okay. So then after the slaves got liberated, we then had what was called black codes. So then we stood up these vagrancy laws. So it was if, you, if you're a black person who's unemployed and you're just walking around, you're a criminal, we can arrest you. And then we put you back on the plantation. That's literally what happened. Then you had Jim Crow. So wait, how are they <clears throat> supposed to get a job if they can't wander around? Correct. And then, then it got so crazy that in Mississippi, for example, if your boss, you did a good job and he wanted to give you a raise, they outlawed giving black people the raise. Those are the black codes. Okay, then you have um, uh, the Federal Housing Association, FHA, right? And this is around post-World War II. You got a lot, lot of low-class white um, uh, families that, and we all know the, the quickest way to generate revenue is home ownership. So we came up with this really good idea. Why don't we start doing... Um, low cost mortgages for for poor people well what ended up happening so what ended up happening was that the banks were instructed by and you can read this it's called color of law that's the name of the book the banks were instructed to approve loans for white people and not for black people and the same economic strata now so what ended up happening was white people 
got these housing loans, ended up in the suburbs. The black people got nothing and ended up in the projects. So then the sons and daughters of those white and black people are, again, starting at a different starting point. Yep. Because when you were at 1950, you, you, you get that house, you're able to pay off that house by, let's say, 1970, 1975. Your kids are going to inherit that. They can liquidate it. They can do whatever they want. That's, again, another head start. Um, then you have the legal system, which has never been reformed completely from its racism, where you have a 20% differentiation between sentencing, 20% longer, a black person and a white person, for similarly situated crimes. This report was published. I can get that to you if you want. The report was published during the, uh, the not the Obama administration, but the Trump administration. So if anybody wants to question it, I don't know what to tell you. Black people and white people were prosecuted at, for the same, similarly situated crimes, 20% variance in sentencing, okay? So all of those things represent the head start. That is white privilege. All those uh, hurdles that, that I just, just talked about in the context of competition makes it so that one group of people has a head start over the other of group course. of people. Of and course. you know what happened? Even with that, we were still saying, you know what, that's okay. We can grind it out and struggle and our kids will be okay. So we had this thing called Black Wall Street in Tulsa. And then you know what happened. The police organized a militia and destroyed Black Wall Street for that reason. So, so we are the sons and the daughters of the people that that happened to. And there are a lot of people who are the sons and the daughters of the people that did not happen to who are saying all our, our sons and daughters now are, are, are starting the race from an equal spot. That's what white privilege is. Good question. And again, you don't necessarily have to agree that it's right. Do your own research. But that's what it is. That's what the concept is. I got to tell you, I love the hell out of you for asking the question and, and, and really, truly wanting to learn. Yep. It's very important. Yep. So Vanessa says, please listen to this. If you listen to anything I've said, please listen to this. Okay. So Vanessa says, we have to stop canceling people. Yes. Stop with the canceling, please. Um, <clears throat> growing is always painful. Holy moly, the wisdom here. But people, we have, uh, but people get shut down fast and not always fairly. So until we start bridging the gap to understanding, we're kind of fucked. She's absolutely right. And there is so much wisdom in this post, y'all. What this woman is saying is it's true, guys. It's true. We got to, we got to end the canceling bullshit and we've got to be patient with people and people got to be patient with us, man. We're human beings. It's a very volatile time. You guys realize we were not meant to see all the evil in the world. Now we got a 24-hour news cycle. Everybody's got cameras. You can ingest all the fucking horrible evil on the planet, right? And then we all come and talk to each other. People are hurt, man. People are carrying around pain. We don't know what 275 was carrying around before he got on. Y'all don't know what I was carrying around before I got on, right? And then somebody says something, and boom, we're going to cancel them. We're not going to hear what they have to say. That's complete bullshit, man. Like, let's let, we got to listen to what uh, Sister's saying because she's 100% right. She's 100% right on that. We got to stop canceling people. We got to start listening. We got to start asking questions like Delaney. Um, and then we got to not follow my bad example and get snippy with people. I have to be more patient. I know I have to work on that, y'all. <laughs> I know that I have to work on that, y'all. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. My kids have a swim meet tomorrow, y'all. So I'm going to go check out that swim meet. I'll, I'll report back to you how it's going. In the meantime, love your neighbor, take care of each other. Middle America, we are the media. Till next time, guys. I'll go through the fire. Watch the reason that I run this race.